Ignite students, here we go. Again, are you ready? Plate tectonics, all the details you've ever wanted. Here we go. Continental drift? Nah. Plate tectonics? Yeah. Some silly Drake meme. I don't get it. I'm an old man. Okay. Continental drift, one of the biggest issues with it is it actually set up and said the continents and the edges of the land are where the boundaries should be. But come the mid-60s, mapping the, the seafloor, all of a sudden they see that's not what's happening. They're, the Pacific plate is just ocean. There's really not a lot of land in the whole plate. So plate tectonics overtook this, okay? Um, we're going to learn about faults today. Not these kinds of faults, okay? Um, I don't know if, if any of you are familiar with XKCD. This guy's a comic writer. It's usually pretty funny. He starts out pretty f normal and scientific and then just kind of goes off the edge. So, ha, ha, ha. The plates. What plates are we worried about? There is the Pacific plate, the North American plate, the South American plate. There is the Eurasian plate, the African plate, the Indo-Australian plate, the yeah, Antarctic plate. That's it. That's what we've got here. Most good, air quotes, good um, maps dealing with plate tectonics are going to center things up like this, the east and the west. We don't, we're not, they're not going to divide the globe here and put the uh, Pacific and split the Pacific on two sides and have the Atlantic in the middle. They're going to have the Pacific in the middle because the Pacific is the biggest plate on earth. And when there is no land here, and this is, we'll learn later, the ring of fire. Right? There's all sorts of stuff going on here. But the North American plate, there are a lot more plates than seven. There are seven major plates. In fact, let's just look at some other stuff here. Here we go. So, again, putting the Pacific plate a little more central than normal. Right, You just don't divide. You don't center this up and split on the Pacific. You can split several other places, whether it's in the middle of Asia or um, the middle of the Atlantic. Either of those is fine. But you have the Pacific Plate, the North American Plate, the South American Plate, the African Plate, the Eurasian Plate, the Indo-Australian Plate, Antarctic Plate. There are more. Nazca Plate, uh, the Scotia. I really don't know how to pronounce that one. Scotia. Caribbean. The, the Wanda Fuca Plate. That's important. Um, a lot of stuff going on right there at the Canadian border with that one. Uh, the Philippine plate is disappearing. There's all sorts of stuff going on. All right. Here we go. You know what? Before I scroll, before I talk, we said continental drift was no good because they said the plates should, you know, come right here and not deal with these oceans, that the continents slid across the ocean floor. Uh, the ocean floor is moving. The ocean floor is part of the moving thing. The plate includes that. So, continental drift out, plate tectonic in. But that still didn't explain how. There is uneven heating coming from the core, bubbling up through the mantle of the earth. Hot things rise, cold things sink. So, in the mantle, it's rock, but it's molten rock. Warm magma rises, cool magma sinks, and if you get these cycles, you get spots, hot spots, cold spots, and that sets up the movement of these plates. All these plates ride on the asthenosphere. The lithosphere floats on the asthenosphere and moves around, and you've got weak spots, thin spots, where magma from the mantle can move right up through and reach this. Okay. Plate, 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 plate. There's a couple other pictures I wanted to get to. Oh, we talked about this again. This is the lithosphere. Um, the asthenosphere is all of this, right? This is the oceanic crust and the continental crust. Continental is thicker because it's land, and then you've got water over the ocean crust. All that is good. So crust, 
then all of this is mantle, but we're going to split upper mantle, lower mantle. The lithosphere overlaps crust and mantle. The asthenosphere is all mantle, but it's a couple layers there. This part of the mantle is rigid and floats over this asthenosphere. Okay, one shot. They try to fit everything into one picture. And so it's a good picture, but it's also confusing because there's too much going on. This is every type of boundary there is. The boundaries are divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. Except there's three types of convergent boundaries, and there's a couple types of divergent boundaries, and there's all sorts of different ways to have a transform boundary. It, you put all that in one picture and it just gets crowded. Start simple. Divergent boundary is when two plates move away from each other. A convergent boundary is when two plates converge. A transform boundary is when two plates move past each other. That's it. Diverge, converge, move past. We think of these because of the way we see them moving. We think of them based on what's going on. A lot of geologists call the divergent a spreading center or a creation boundary and the convergent a destruction boundary because they are focused on the lithosphere. And at a divergent boundary, you don't just have this gap in the surface of the earth or in the surface of the ocean floor or whatever. Molten rock flows up, fills that boundary, and this keeps moving out. Seafloor spreading. So you are creating new lithosphere. You're creating new ocean crust if it's a seafloor spread. At a convergent boundary, these things can't just go into each other forever and ever. They, one is going to end up under the other. And when it goes down into the mantle, it's going to melt and be destroyed. You are destroying lithosphere. Here, I'm creating lithosphere. Here, I'm destroying lithosphere. At a transform boundary, though, right, at a transform boundary, you're not creating or destroying lithosphere. So. Sorry. All right. So, here we go. If we looked at this, what used to be a straight line, you've got lithosphere, you've got a thinosphere, you've got hot rock moving in as these two plates, red arrow says moving that way and that way, that way and that way. Then, they also tried to show you showed you. They also tried to show a transform fault at the same spot because this used to be in place and then it shifted that these moved at different rates than these and it split along that line. It's a little too much for one image. Um, here you go. Even if you just have three plates, okay, there's seven major plates and lots of little plates. Even if there was just three, Plate C turns this way. Plate B does the same. And plate A just slides to the left. What's happening? If plate A slides to the left, this gap here between A and B opens up, divergent gap. And so you're going to get new magma flow up and create new seafloor. Over here, plate A and B are going to run into each other. One has got to go under the other and it's going to get destroyed. And you're going to lose all the stuff that used to be on that plate. And then here along the bottom, between A and C and between A and B, those are transformed. They're sliding past each other. They're grinding past each other. I don't want to get... This is part of the East Africa Ridge. We'll get to some other good pictures of that. Um, age of the Crust... Oceanic crust. It, it ignore, the continents are, are blurred out. This is the age of the oceanic crust. Why is this red? Why is it super young? Because this 
Mid-Atlantic Ridge is new. It's new. It's literally new land. There is new land being created there all the time. Very slowly, but all the time. Well, what that means is this. If this um, Philippine plate here is moving under, well, that's old rock. It's moved all the way across the world, and now it's going underneath the Eurasian plate or part of the Indo-Australian plate here. As it moves under, it melts and goes away. We don't know what the Earth looked like before Pangaea because all that rock was melted and then came up new on the other side. There is no way to know. I mean, there, there are ways to think about it. There are ways to estimate. But the exact shape? Uh-uh. It's kind of weird. There's no ocean crust older than like 220 million years. Because any of the oldest stuff gets pushed down under ocean crust. Continental crust may be different. This is ocean crust. The old stuff is pushed down and under. New stuff stays on top. All right. There was... Now we're not doing that part. Okay. Let's look here. Uh, just another another good map of the plates. The Philippine plate is against moving against falling under the Eurasian plate. All right, you've got your Pacific, North America, South America, the Eurasian, the African, the Indo-Australian, the Antarctic. It's fine. You can get rid of that one. Types of plate boundaries. Ooh, that doesn't look like it. That's a volcano. Types of plate boundaries. Divergent, convergent, transform. Sometimes as they move apart, you get soft things. I thought this was interesting. The National Park Service thought you would enjoy this more if you watched the, what happens with the Oreos. That the cream in the middle, while it's dense and hard and can support the cookie on top, it can also be broken and it moves. And so when you have two cookie halves moving apart, the cream wells up in between and you get new crust. Convergent, as these two move together, one is going to subduct. It's going to fall under the other one. This is a subduction zone. Because this is crust. This is rock, earth, dirt, soil, everything. And it's moving under this other plate. And it's heading down to the earth, and it's going to be melted away. Transform plate boundary, they're going to slip past each other. Hot spot's a thin spot, or that this little bit of crust is moving across some hot spot in the mantle, a lot like the Hawaiian Islands. Okay, we'll talk about that. All right. There are three types of convergent plates. we got to keep pick up the pace here. There are three types of convergence plates because you could have ocean-ocean collide, you could have ocean-continent collide, and you could have continent-continent collide. Wow, that's, that's a lot. All right, uh, check my notes. Ocean-ocean. Oh, the Aleutian Islands. The Aleutian Islands, because these volcanic hotspots come from the Aleutian Islands. There is a trench right here where one plate is subducting under the other, and that ocean trench. But the Aleutian Islands off the southwest coast of Alaska that move out into the ocean, that's ocean, ocean islands. Here we go. This ocean continent collision, that's familiar. That's the Andes. That's all the South America um, lots of examples of this, where the ocean plate moves in and is subducted because the continental plate, continental plate is rock, but it's less dense and it will tend to lift up. And so the, if its ocean will always move under the continental plate. This is never going to go the other way. Third version, continent, continent. When Indian plate hit the Eurasian plate, you got the entire Himalayan mountains and Mount Everest. Why? Because this continental crust is going to want to float. The crust actually doesn't, see how it thins out here at the bottom of this picture, it doesn't subduct 
as this heats up, it's going to move up and stay more liquid, stay more buoyant. buoyant. It's weird talking about rocks and land and floating things. But this is true. The, the mountain range is built up of this crust not falling down but piling up as these two continents collide. All of this is convergent. There are just three flavors of converging because all of these are these are destructive because you are losing information. You are losing lithosphere as this goes down and melts and goes away. All right. Now, what's the opposite of this? Divergent. The East Africa Ridge is a divergent. It's splitting. You can split in the ocean, mid-Atlantic Ridge, or you can split over a continent. Check this out. This part of Africa, all right, is falling off, all right? Um, there are some really good pictures I was trying to get to, but it doesn't look cool. Uh, it must have been a different web spot. Here we go. So, Somalia, the Arabian Peninsula, Red Sea, this is Africa, that's Madagascar, um, I say Somalia, I'm sorry, this is Ethiopia, this is Somalia and Yemen here on the end of the Arabian Peninsula. I said that wrong. This is the Red Sea. This is the Indian Ocean over here. This Kenyan Dome, the Ethiopian Dome, this is splitting right through here. These are thin spots. And this is all plate boundary, light dots, dark dots, dashes. This is the East African wrist, Rift. There is an East Branch and a West Branch because it's a big giant rock. It doesn't break cleanly. If you've got a hot spot of magma underneath and these two plates are trying to split apart, but they were one, it doesn't just break smooth straight line. All of this is going to be some jagged coastline in the future. Okay? All right. Let's look at something. This is back in time. Here is, we were, we were leaving Pangea. This is part of the same video I showed you last week. You're leaving Pangea. North America and South America plate are moving off. The African plate is moving towards the Eurasian plate. And the Indo-Australian plate's breaking off over here. But I want you to watch this part of Africa right here. Yes, that is glacier covered right now. This is actually the Arabian Peninsula. This is Saudi Arabia, um, Yemen and Oman, or, um, yeah, no, Yemen and Somalia, not Oman. This is Saudi Arabia right here. Ethiopia, Egypt, current day. Watch what happens. So we're going to play this. I'm going to try and full screen this without breaking my Chromebook. Catch up, catch up. There we go. Watch this landmass. So there's part of Portugal and Spain. This is moving north. All right, we're going to clear the ice cover. That is not the map. There's India flying past, moving super fast. First of all, all this water, that's not really there anymore because all of that. This Saudi Arabia, this Arabian Peninsula, Look at this. This is the Arabian Peninsula. Now you can see it. There is no Red Sea. This is Ethiopia right here. This is about to break off and move and rotate. Okay? There is the Red Sea. And there's this gap right here. There's that. There's Saudi Arabia, Somalia, and Yemen. That's current. As the Indian and Eurasian plates, things move, all sorts of stuff happens. But that's an estimate again. I'm not too worried about future estimates. I'm just saying that was a rift, a continent dividing right there. 
Okay, that's what a riff does and what it looks like. So now imagine that same thing. How oh, we got rid of that tab. Imagine the same thing happening here with the rest of West uh, East Africa splitting off. All right. Here we go. Transform boundaries. Things move past each other. Um, San Andreas fault line. Hold on. Let's get a better picture here. Okay. It's not a big picture. There are lots of places you can see great examples of what's going on in the San Andreas fault line. Okay. That was a lot of information. That was a long session. We'll get back to it. I'll see you Tuesday. Everybody have a great day.